use a variety of resources to produce products to sell in a market. For any given combination of these resources, the firm will produce a corresponding level of output. Economists refer to a firm's total product as the total quantity of output produced for a given amount of inputs. Total product influences the short-run considerations made by a firm because it shows what factors contribute to an increase in labor usage. A total product curve is a graphical representation of the way a firm's total output varies during the short run. As one or more inputs are held fixed, and one input, usually labor, is variable. Using labor as an example of such an input, as the amount of labor increases, more workers are hired or existing workers work more overtime, output will change. More workers means the firm could produce more products. If the firm uses no labor at all, the firm can't produce any products, so the total product curve starts at the origin. As more labor is added, output typically increases at an increasing rate, so the curve becomes steeper. For example, if one worker is hired, he or she will be doing everything, so production may be inefficient. Without other workers, the firm isn't able to capitalize on a division of labor, which is the assignment of different parts of a manufacturing process or task to different people in order to improve efficiency. If there's no division of labor, there's no possibility of specialization of labor, and the worker wastes time turning from one task to another. As a second worker and then a third worker are added, there will be enough workers to specialize so that each does what he or she is best at and does not waste time switching between tasks. As more workers are hired, the scope for further division of labor and specialization decreases, so the slope of the curve begins to flatten. At a later stage, the number of workers has become large enough that they may be difficult to manage, may get into each other's way, and cannot all be usefully employed at the same time, so the extra output each produces gets smaller and the curve eventually peaks. At this point, additional hires actually reduce total output. Imagine a room full of people trying to assemble a single item, but then another person gets added to the room. A total product curve is usually S-shaped. At high levels of a particular variable input, using an additional input adds costs and reduces output. So a manager will maximize the output by ceasing to use more of that input. This is an example of diminishing marginal returns, which is a decrease in marginal product produced with an increase in inputs. Diminishing marginal returns of labor would be the decreasing marginal product with an increase in the number of workers. For example, a factory creating plastics hires many new employees, which increases output. But then the factory becomes crowded and workers have trouble moving around each other, decreasing efficiency. Diminishing marginal returns is often described as the total output curve increasing at a decreasing rate.